Hello, my pouring friends. I'm just about to do a pour, surprise, surprise, which is fortunate because um, if I wasn't doing a pour and you were watching this, it would be very confusing because I'm sure that's what you're expecting. As you can see, I've got all my colours ready to go aside from today's experimental component. You know how cells are enhanced by the addition of dimethicone or silicon or alcohol and how we go around and experiment with many and many products that have those that ingredient dimethicone silicon or alcohol is the primary ingredient in it such as WD-40 coconut hair milk serum um, and many other things that people use what I'm going to use today to see how we go for cells is going to be hand sanitizer. It says it kills 99% of bacteria, though I don't believe that's got anything to do with um, what we're doing today. But what I did notice here in the ingredients is that the first ingredient listed is alcohol. So therefore it's quite strong in its alcohol, which is possibly why it's claiming that it can kill 100% of ingredients. So how do I plan on doing this experiment for us to see the difference? Easy, we'll do two flip cups. One, I'll prepare now the layering of the paint. And then the next one, I'll add the alcohol to. So here we go. My base colour that I'm utilising today is Birch Forest, which is um, off-white. I'm putting that straight in, and I'm, as you can see, I'm adding quite a bit, and I don't really know why, because, um, yeah, well, I don't know why. We'll do this side, the non-alcohol side. So let's see if I can remember the colours so we get them in the same order, at least, so that we can have a chance of it being replicated the best it can be. Purple went in first, and I do love purple and yellow, though you can get muddying, but I'm going to I'm going to push that today. Oh, good, the yellow sank right in nicely. And following the yellow, I think we will do this beautiful marshmallow pink. And following that pink, we will do the aqua. And then following the aqua, we'll do the lilac. And that is our non-alcohol cup. Now I've got to add alcohol to all of these and I'm just going to do one squirt and as you can see, I hope you can see, I might bring it up, it's quite gel-like so I don't feel like I have to worry about it changing the consistency which is kind of what gave me the appeal to it. I'm um, trying it because you know alcohol generally speaking is um, quite runny and evaporates really really quickly so and also most of those experiments I've done utilizing the alcohol have been in summer when the evaporation rate is really really high. As you can see I'm mixing this in right in uh, just simply because that's what my intuition is telling me to do. It's not silicon it does behave differently but it will need to get into the paint and I guess really the telling will be in the um the pour. Okay, purple first. I'll put my use colours over here. Followed by yellow. Glorious egg yolk yellow. Like, isn't that beautiful colour? I really, really am really so attracted to it. Yet it's a colour that I don't wear or really have in my house, but I think I might get a bit more happening because that was really, 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 really nice. Okay. And that's it. I'm just going to go and get my torch back. And the torch was literally right behind me, so I didn't really need to worry too much at all. Okay, so I will do a flip, which will be a bit dramatic because I'm not very confident at doing it, though it turns out all right every time. Ready? Here we go. This is the non-alcohol side. This is the alcohol side. I think we'll just drag them straight away. Ooh, 
we'll see how those cups go. Alright, well there's stuff happening on both sides, good stuff. Certainly nothing as voluptuous and delicious as what we see with um, silicon added, but it is only early. We've done no stretching, we've done no tilting, we've done no torching. So we will give it a bit more of a minute. Well, I can't really see what's going on in this cup because it's absolutely coated in the white. This cup's got dainty little cells, which was the alcohol cup, and they're holding quite well on the side of the, of the cup as it is. So whilst the cells might not be voluptuous and delicious and plump like some of the cells we seek, oh, I might just do that, um, it certainly seems to create cells of good integrity and shaping. But at this point, I wouldn't say they're anything more different than no, uh, no alcohol. Let's give these a quick torch before I do anything more, just to get some of the air bubbles out and just so that when I do this next tilt, or this first tilt really, we can see what's gonna be revealed and the air bubbles that do pop up can have an opportunity to shift into cells should they care choose to. Now I'm talking like the cells have got a, a consciousness. Well, I'm odd, I do believe many things have consciousness. Okay, we're tilting like this. As you can see, ever so slightly, nice and gently goes the tilt. It's a nice colour palette. It's interesting how the differences are still quite gigantic. It's funny how I've got a butterfly shape without even trying. You know, it's really not that impressive. I cannot see any differences. In fact, if I was to push myself for differences, I would say that the alcohol side has not developed as well as the non-alcohol side. Should we go a bit crazy and add a bit of silicon and do a dirty pour in the middle and just see what happens? Oh, all right. Yes, of course I've got silicon on hand. It was just over there. The silicon I'm using today is the good old coconut milk. I've tried many silicons and I always go back to this. Um, just for your information, I'm probably adding around two drops to 100 mils. Okay, and I will just give that the one, two, three stir. 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 Okay. Oh, do I have a spare cup? I do! Phenomenal. I'll just put a little bit of white in it. I don't know if you can see what I'm doing. Oh, you can! That's great. I'm going to pour from a height. Look at those. They're nice. And see how we go. I'm not sure exactly what I'm um, aiming to do, but, you know... Isn't that good that I don't feel stuck up on it? So many times in creations I get, you know, immobilized even at times because I don't know what my next plan is. But I've found that if I just allow myself to relax into the notion of having fun and not worrying too much about what the outcome will be, more often than not, that's when I'll get the best surprises because I'm not focused on an outcome. Now, really, there's probably only about 60 mils of paint in here. Oh, no, probably 100. So what I'll do is I'll do a little diddler diddler here. And a diddler diddler is this. Diddler, 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 diddler. Okay, coming up here. Bringing that ribbon around. Filling that little gap in. Um, 
inclined to bring some down in the middle here just just cause just well just because I can and then mirroring it up on this side maybe doing that I'm certainly not going to really be able to see the differences oh you can I really can see that this would make awesome cells if I poured it in a way that you could see it well I'm not too worried about getting this last bit of paint out on the substrate because it's predominantly got the base in it now I might just try and let this oh my torch went straight in it that's all right we're pouring on really thick card it was a recommendation of um, Julie Cutts she uses this really heavy card as part of her practicing of palettes and particularly at the moment while she's exploring getting together um, or finalizing the last parts of her recipe for a new homemade pouring uh, medium that will support up her new line of pouring paints that she's soon to release which is very exciting um, I love new products like many of us do unfortunately I'm not a person who sticks to products when I say unfortunately it makes it very expensive for me because I'm forever just enjoying the pursuit of the experiment rather than the final perfect arts creation and that's how I love it. It's, I've always loved doing my um, pouring like that. Okay. Got some really, really, really cute cells. I can absolutely tell the difference. Silicone wins hands down. Um, I'll see if I can stretch this out for you to just even see where I've been. You know, this line down here, you can see how the... Sh the silicon cells have formed beautifully all within here um, up here I'll bring you off the tripod and show you a close-up huh ready don't get too seasick okay so sorry about the glare but that's all right too isn't it this is our non-alcohol part all in here we did get some really nice effects up there that's definitely the silicon this is silicon this all in here is silicon this is the alcohol added side though this strip down here is silicon but this feature here all that lacing there that was enhanced or brought out by the alcohol side and this part here, that's the non-alcohol side. So, you know, I actually feel like I didn't do this experiment very well now that I'm having a chance to look at it. I feel like that maybe I really should redo it and give each component, like the cup with the alcohol, a full substrate to work upon and develop in this another substrate for one pour that has no um, cell additive and then finally one with silicon so that we can see the differences oh, it's certainly not the first time anyone's done these experiments I love repeating them when I see them for my own experience and just sharing it's really really good fun um, I mean the delight that I have with my pouring experience is just the magic of doing it and getting really gorgeous results and I really really just love watching other people's joy when they see it happening too so I don't have that um, perfectionism streak in me too hard yet oh gosh can you see that bird there hello ducky trying to get it into a bit more focus doesn't want to maybe a ducky dinosaur but anyway, that's our little bit of play today. Uh, working on the 
cardboard substrate was fine. I'm interested to see how it dries. I mean, I'm sure it will dry perfectly. I've seen them done. Unfortunately, I didn't give myself or get myself a really good pulling rack to support the edges up. So I will have curvature. You can see the weight pulling down there where my cooling rack isn't quite long enough. Look, just goes to there. But nonetheless, still all very much good fun. Look at some of that gorgeous pour off. How nice is that? And that and that and that. Oh, the more I look, the more I can see how very, very nice these colours work together. Do you like that um, rusty colour that the yellow and the purple produce? Where's another good example of it? Sort of there. Here. That's the yellow and the purple working together and I really love it. It reminds me of, you know, antique flowers. You know how you see some of those old school flowers that have that beautiful toning? All right, my friends. I hope you've been having great fun doing your pouring and are you getting, oh look, can you see that whale's tail now? There. I see whale's tails in a lot of my pores. Oh, that's very cool. Hmm. All right, I'm gonna stop the recording now and I want you all to have a wonderful week and Oh, look, there's a bird. Can you see that bird? There's its head and there's its wings. Gee, there's heaps happening in this paw. And look, that space behind it all. Oh, look, and there's, a, there's another little head with a beak pointing towards that planet. Maybe it's a penguin. Oh, my gosh. All right, that's really enough. Can someone help me turn the, cam the camera off? Have a great week, my friends.